Hey, what's up everyone? In this new tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create any kind of endless game. So we're gonna use a script, which is called Tile Manager, and it will generate tiles or objects like the pipes infinitely. So before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you don't miss my next videos. And let's get started. And to make things easier for you, I've already created this tile manager script, which will generate tiles infinitely. In our case, we're going to use it to generate the pipes with their obstacles when the ball is moving forward. But you could use it for other games like an endless runner game. And I will add a link to it under the description. First of all, we have to import it to our project. I'm going to put it under the assets folder by dragging and dropping it under the assets and before we use the tile manager script we have to create the tiles that we're gonna use to create the level for now we have one pipe which is this vortex object we're gonna use it as the default tile then let's duplicate it using ctrl d and we can add obstacles to it i've already created another 3d model and it is called obstacle 001 basically we can enable and disable some of the chunks to create different kind of obstacles to the game the same thing you will have a link to it under the description let's drag it under the hierarchy and we have to add it as a child of this vortex which is the second tile of course we can change the material of these chunks which are these objects that is called cylinder under the materials folder i'm going to create a new material using right click create then material and let's call it obstacle and from the inspector we can change its color to any color like a gray color then we can select all of the chunks then let's drag this obstacle material to the inspector and that will apply it to all of the elements now we can disable some of these to create different kind of tiles I'm gonna disable these by unchecking this check mark then we can duplicate it using ctrl D and let's hide this vortex so that we can adjust the third one I'm gonna disable other cylinders and you could add as many tiles as you want let's use ctrl D and hide the previous vortex so that we can adjust this one and let's stick with these now that we have the tiles that we're gonna use for our level we can add the tile manager script to the hierarchy First we have to create an empty game object using right click and create empty. Let's call it tile manager as well. Then we can attach the tile manager script to our object. Then we have to set some parameters. So this script needs the tile prefabs that will be used to generate the level. Here we can set the size. So we have four tiles. And before we reference these objects, we have to create a copy out of these, put them under the assets, and that's what is called prefab. We can create a prefabs folder under the assets folder using right click, create, folder. I'm gonna call it prefabs. And if you drag in the vertex object under this folder, you will be able to create an original prefab, which is a copy of this vertex object now you could get rid of it and the tile manager script can access this prefab so we can reference it by dragging the vertex under the first element same thing for the others make sure to enable them and create the prefab then select original prefab then 
The same thing, let's go back to the tile manager script and reference the vertex 2 or first we have vertex 1, 2 and 3 and we have more options to set. The second parameter is the tile length, for me it's 12. Next we have the number of tiles that we want to see in the level, for example 4 or 3. Next we have to set the total number of tiles. In our case, we have four tiles. And last but not least, the Z-Spawn. We can tell this tile manager script about the starting position from where he will start instantiating the tiles. In our case, we are using the origin of the scene, which is zero. Finally, we have to select the ball and change its tag from untagged to the player tag because this tile manager script needs the player position or the ball pivot position so that it can check whether we have reached a certain range we spawn the next tile and so on and that's pretty much it and before we hit play let's get rid of these models and there you go we have an endless game the tiles are generated while the ball is moving forward in the next video we are going to check for collision for now nothing is happening when we collide with these obstacles so i think that's pretty much it guys for this video i hope you like it if you have any question or comment make sure to write it under the comment section down below and i will see you in the next one